Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. Today we'll be going through everything that you need to know if you're applying for medicine in the 2019-2020 application round. So the main things I'm going to talk about are the timescales of the application process. I'm going to talk about the entrance examinations that you need to be concerned about. I will also talk about the grades you should have to give you a competitive chance of getting in. Last but not least, I'll talk about open days, but also whether you should go on any medical courses and whether I recommend them or not. So let's quickly discuss the timescales involved in applying to medicine. In general, there are two types of people. People who've decided pretty early on, let's say in year 10 slash in year 11, about the fact that they want to do medicine. If you're one of these students, you should have begun your work experience relatively early and you would have collected quite a lot of experiences, volunteering, but also books that you've read over the last few years. The second group of people are students who are currently in year 12 and who are just really not sure about whether medicine is for them or not and have maybe made their decision quite recently. Regardless of which group you're in, you need to make sure to organize some work experience for this upcoming summer. This way you can really recall on recent memories in the interviews to really show the interviewers that you've been actively involved in you know, the medical field. You've been actively getting yourself into hospitals. Remember, after your summer examinations at school, it'll be a non-stop process. Things begin to get very fast paced. You have your UKCAT examination. After that, you write your personal statement. And in medicine, the personal statement is pretty tough to get right, but it can be done with a lot of time and commitment. After that, you then have your BMAT, which you have to prepare for. And after that, you then have to really work hard for your interviews. And I can tell you from having help people over the last years prepare for the medical interviews. It's the medical interviews where most people fail. It's the medical interviews where the best candidates usually through not preparing enough end up falling flat on their face. So until you get your medical offer, there are so many things you have to get nailed. So just mentally prepare yourself and motivate yourself because nothing beats the feeling of when the emails start coming in offering you places at certain medical schools. The next key point is entrance examinations. The two main exams are the UCAT and the BMAT. Let me quickly tell you when you should start preparing and how you should start preparing. Now the UCAT is a new exam for this year, both for students in Australia and New Zealand, but also in the United Kingdom. It used to be called the UK CAT, but now it's called the UCAT. Remember, for students in the UK, the UK CAT and UCAT are very similar exams. I really want to stress, use resources such as Medify, where you're actively doing questions and learning techniques to really improve on your UKCAT performance. I strongly recommend at least four to five weeks of preparation for the UKAT. Two to three weeks of sort of general preparation where you're understanding the question types and getting used to it all, and then two weeks of very intense preparation right up until the exam. Now the next exam is the BMAT. It's usually sat in November, but some of you can sit it earlier in September if you wish. I personally sat it in November, but I had no choice about it. Now for the BMAT, it's far more scientifically rigorous, and so I personally think it requires far more revision. It also has an essay section, so it's not just you clicking you know, through multiple choice answers. You have to make sure you practice writing essays and making good arguments. You also have to make sure you revise your GCSE science content, but also there are some transferable skills from the UCAT which help with section one of the BMAT. The BMAT is most useful for universities such as Oxford, Cambridge, and the London universities, UCL and Imperial. I do know that there are some other universities which use a BMAT, but I can't remember them. Moving on to the next bit of the application process, grades, grades, grades. Grades are actually one of the most important parts of the medical application process. Unfortunately, yes, I know everyone wants to become a doctor, but if you don't have the grades for it, it is quite tough. Ideally, at GCSC, you want to get the equivalent of six to eight A stars. I think this is around six to eight, seven to nines, as you guys as you guys know. Now, the figure I mentioned is the average sort of grades that a medical student, a successful medical student has. So if you are above that sort of figure, then you're above average. But remember, I said that the figure six to eight A star equivalent is an average. So students also get below that figure and still manage to get in. Generally, for more competitive medical schools, you would be expected to offer more A stars simply because the rest of the cohort will be having more or slash better grades. If applying to really competitive medical schools, be kind of realistic. Other candidates will have very, very high GCSEs and you want to make sure that you apply to the medical school that you have the best chances you know, in terms of getting in. 
A levels, I believe the minimum requirement nowadays is A star AA, and this is in terms of predictions. So you want to make sure that you at least have an A star AA prediction. Some medical schools require the prediction to be in certain subjects, such as chemistry. So make sure you check that up before you apply to that medical school. Again, the more A stars that you're predicted, the higher the chances that you are going to be called for interview and ultimately given an offer. Even if you predict three A stars, your offer might only be one A star AA. So once you get your offer, the pressure of getting those AT grades will decrease slightly. You still have to get good grades, but the predictions are very important, so work hard for those. And the next key point I want to discuss is open days and medical courses. Now, I personally did not go on many open days, I know my friends did, but I sort of saw the universities when I visited those to do some research or to go and visit a laboratory. The only university I properly visited was Cambridge, and even then, I believe most of the times I came to Cambridge to visit was again to go to a laboratory as opposed to actually come and see the university. If traveling is quite difficult for you, use YouTube, look up different medical schools, and actually use the official medical school channels to really get an idea of what the medical school is like. Some of you might enjoy watching vloggers at certain medical schools and others might enjoy reading student room opinions about certain medical schools. But remember, taking these online opinions and online perspectives, you know, always take them with a pinch of salt. They are someone else's opinion and your opinion of the medical school may be completely different. Now, medical courses is a bit of a controversial topic because, again, they do cost money and sometimes, you know, some of them are quite expensive. But if you can afford them, then they are worthwhile in some cases. Really look at that sort of summer course that's being offered to you and see what can I learn from it. Will I learn practical medicine skills? Will I learn communication skills? Will I gain a better idea of what the application process is like? All of these things are things you have to consider. There's no point just going to a course which you paid money for just to listen to someone speak for the whole day. You should be going on interactive courses where you're actually getting involved, you're speaking, you're learning stuff. But remember, splashing money on loads of medical courses won't necessarily entitle you to a medical school place. You have to still make sure to work hard on top of all of this because ultimately it's hard work that gets you in. And now the last point I want to talk about is medical interviews. Yes, they're tough. <laughs> Um, the main types are Oxbridge, panel and MI interviews. You have to really make sure to start preparing early because medical interviews are actually when you reveal yourself. All this time you've been a number, you've been an anonymized candidate with a you know personal statement to your name, with some grades to your name. But when you go there for your medical interview, you have to present yourself in the best light possible. Not only do you have to articulate yourself well, you have to make sure you've read up on medicine to sound interested. But also you have to sound enthusiastic, you have to look enthusiastic. Your body language will give a lot away. And this is your chance to really show the interviewers that you deserve that medical school place. So I can't stress enough how much practice you should get in. When I say practice, I don't just mean reading books about medical interviews. When I say practice, I don't mean watching YouTube videos on medical interviews. I mean get out there and have mock interviews. Whether you get your friends to mock interview you lots of times, whether you have lots of interviews with the teachers, or whether you go to a company and get medical mock interviews, just do it because that's the only way you can really improve your abilities when it comes to interviews. And I can guarantee you, over time, you will improve and ultimately it's you that will get the medical school place. And you're the one who will think, gosh, all that hard work was really worth it. Anyway, this has been quite a long video. Yes, I'll produce many more videos over the next few weeks, as I always say <clears throat> when it comes to um, my content. And... I wish you all of the best of luck. Let this video be the start of the 2019 medical school application process. And I really hope that all of you are working very hard for your end of year school examinations. Absolutely smash those. And after that, let's start prepping for the UCAT and everything else. I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.